All right, guys, how's it going? This video was meant to be a Ryzen Mini ITX build video, but I went and sprained or twisted my ankle on Monday and I just can't stand to use the camera. So instead of that, I'm stuck at my PC. I just thought I'd do a technology update video, taking a look at some of the more interesting tech news of this past month. And we'll start off with something very pleasing indeed. A Reddit user posted Mine Factory, which is a German CPU or technology e-tailer, and quite a large one at that, I believe. Somebody on Reddit had got hold of their August sales figures, and then another user stuck them into graphs, and here we have the CPUs sold per month. Down at the bottom left here, we can see March. AMD only had 20% of all CPU sales, around 3,000. So Mine Factory are definitely very large, and back then, Intel would have around 8,000 or 72% of all sales. But we can see the red March, and now in August, AMD sales have actually taken over with 56% of all CPU sales, which is around 6,500 of what is just under 13,000 total. So that is a more than doubling in CPU sales between March and August. Now it's only one store obviously, but you know how these things work statistically. If it's been seen in Mine Factory in Germany, it's almost certainly being seen elsewhere. And this is obviously not a simple case of AMD selling cheaper CPUs. As we can now see, that based on the share of revenue, they are at 54%, which is almost the same as a 56% volume. So that's over 1.5 million euros. Even more pleasing though is how the prices are dropping. As we can see here, there is a slow decline, which is what we would hope to see in a competitive market. All the R3s and the R7s slowly dropping in price over time. This would always happen to AMD products though. But the really satisfying thing is it's also happening to the Intel products now. With one or two taking extreme drops, the kind of stuff you might expect to see, for example the 6900K. Obviously Ryzen 7 gave that one a bit of a beating. And you've got other stuff there like the 6950X, which is taking a hammering from Threadripper. So very pleasing to see that we've got competition for sure in the CPU market. Intel almost certainly still shifting a vast amount of volume below all of these chips. Anything below the i3s, Pentiums and all that stuff, Intel will still be shifting millions upon millions more of those. So don't be surprised if you see that the overall market hasn't changed that much in percentage terms. I would expect to see AMD get close to 20% by the end of the year, in overall terms that is. But for the sake of their own health, they're getting the sales where it matters. This is enthusiast grade stuff, even the R3s which we maybe think of as low end. This is really quite enthusiast level stuff in the grand scheme. There's something interesting there I noticed though, TR1950X, looking at that, that is a lot of units sold. And looking at Amazon Germany, we can see a similar story. In German, that's over 200 sold. Over 200 1950Xs, again, maybe not an awful lot, in sheer unit terms, but compared to the i9s, there's a 7900X which has sold over 170. Apparently there were more sold in trays though, so the i9-7900X is just about outselling the Threadripper 1950X still. The 7920X not doing too well, with over 5 sold. And we can see here the older 6950X, only over 190 sold. So Threadripper has already overtaken that CPU in just over a month's sales. I'm always a little bit suspicious of these things, it has to be said. So I went looking for some more information on it. And three days ago, AMD's management presented at the Deutsche Bank Technology Conference. A very German touch to this video so far. But the interesting thing for me here was Devinder Kumar, who is AMD's chief financial officer. He made a pretty interesting comment where he said, So if you look at our average selling prices, I'll give you one data point. You know we introduced a product called Threadripper, which is the highest of the high end, and in that particular space, the price ranges from 549 to 999. Obviously 549 is the newest Threadripper 1900X, the 8 core one, which has just been released. But the interesting point was, and I will share with you that the best selling part is at $999. So the 1950X does appear to be selling very, very well. There's not millions of people buying these CPUs, obviously, but it's good to see anyway. They really do appear to have broken some kind of barrier here and people are taking Threadripper very very seriously as they should because it is the fastest CPU out there. So putting all that together it's just good news after good news for AMD's CPU department. Now it's safe to say that the same cannot be said for the Radeon Technologies group and there was something of a surprise a few days ago when Raja Kaduri who is of course the Radeon Technology group's SVP and chief architect it was declared that he would be taking a sabbatical from AMD with a target return date in December. It was actually first reported over at Fudzilla this one, and while he's away, 
Lisa Su will be assuming the leadership role. Now, Lisa Su is not a graphics architect as far as I know. She was an electrical engineer at IBM, in fact. And I don't know for sure, but I'm quite certain that after a day's work, Lisa doesn't go home and play Counter-Strike either. So this is definitely going to be a temporary appointment. Unlike what happened with the CPU department, after Jim Keller, who was brought in for Zen, after he left the company, Mark Papermaster took over. But Mark Papermaster was also at IBM, and he was a CPU architect. He's still there after Keller left, but I don't think Lisa Sue will be staying in this position somehow. And of course, there's been a lot said about it. Is it because of Vega or something else? The fact is, we just don't know. So apparently, Roger left a message for everyone in RTG. The most interesting part was, at the beginning of the year, I warned that Vega would be hard. And he did say that Vega was personally hard on him, and he had used up a lot of family credits during that time. So taking time off from the 25th and returning in December. Whether or not he'll be back, there is not an awful lot of people out there who are GPU architects and certainly not of his calibre. It's not like AMD were surprised by Vega's performance. They knew the performance by the beginning of the year, the same as I did, because they showed us what the performance was. So this is not some kind of surprise. And if Lisa was going to get rid of him, it would have been smart to do it then. And right at the end, he does say, my sincere thanks to Lisa for supporting me in this decision. Yeah, big story, bit of gossip, but to me, it's probably just everything it appears to be at face value. Now, staying with graphics, obviously in the past week, I launched a couple of pretty big videos with my history of G4 videos. And since I've been sitting on my backside since then, it's given me some time to reflect on one or two things in fact. When I started the technology aspect of this channel, in very early 2016, with videos like the Future is Zen one, and also the Gameworks one, I had a vision of what I wanted to do. And that vision was really warn consumers about the dangers of monopoly, and how we desperately need competition in this arena. Almost every video I have done since that point was meant to hammer that home. Some of you may not realise this, but stuff like this history of GeForce video of these two videos. I knew about all this stuff way back before I even made a video. Stuff like the Intel History of Monopoly video, I knew all about that long, long before I actually made the video. And in fact, almost every video I have made, it's all information that I have known long before the video was actually made. But simply put, there comes a time where you have to admit defeat. And in this case, these views are simply not good enough. 46,000 and 35,000. Way, way more people need to be seeing these videos. But it simply made me come to the realisation that people would rather remain ignorant. The average person just does not want to know. They're only really interested in benchmarks, which is fine. I personally prefer benchmarks with red and green bars. But to be honest with you, the future looks like it's going to be green bars and nothing else. So I've had to reflect on this. If this is what people want, then who am I to try and change their minds on that? And to be frank, I basically believe that things need to get much, much worse before they get better. The biggest problem is enthusiasts are not united. There's too much fanboyism. You've got too many Nvidia fanboys, you've got too many AMD fanboys. These guys will never be united even though they're enthusiasts. And the problem here is not a company war. This isn't about AMD versus Nvidia. And I have recently come to realize it's not even about consumers versus corporations, which is what this channel was all about. I'm consumer focused, or I was very consumer focused. But over time, I have basically come to the realization that consumers are the problem and we're the ones that have to deal with it. We being the enthusiasts, because it is their buying patterns that are affecting us. All of this stuff here, I kind of regret making these videos because as an enthusiast, you watching these videos, there is no way that this can do anything apart from make you feel bad. But the story does have to be told. The problem is all the sheep and their sheepish buying patterns, they don't know about this. They will never know about it. They are utterly clueless and they will remain clueless and they will simply buy what Nvidia puts in front of them at any price and at any performance, we are the ones that need to deal with it. So it's not AMD versus Nvidia. It's not consumer versus corporation. Corporation will win that every time because a corporation is organized at taking their money away because they are simply trusting that corporation to give them their best, which as we saw, is not what happens. So for me, I have basically reached the stage now where I'm done berating Nvidia for basically being a company. It was never their fault at any time. They are simply being a successful company and fleecing the sheep, which is what a company should do. And there is only so much warnings I can give before I simply give up. I'm not entirely sure what the answer is, but it all came to head basically with the Vega launch. Vega looks like a graphics card that was designed for anything except gaming. And while Nvidia is giving us less and less and less, AMD is giving us less and less and less. At least Nvidia is building the gaming card. Sure, they're milking it for all it's worth, but you've got to look at the performance and say, well, sadly, the AMD options are becoming less and less desirable every year. So I am basically done with this whole thing. 
going to be a clean slate, a fresh start. I'll be taking an average point of around 30% improvement. Those old days of the 60% plus, they're gone. They're never coming back and each new graphics card will be rated on its merits based on perhaps around a 30% improvement. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. Now moving on and a similar topic. This was something I had planned to talk about before I saw this. It was actually over at Twitter. I got a link to video cards with the rumor that Nvidia is preparing a GTX 1070 Ti. And as you can see here, I was going to mention this probability in my next video, but I've been beaten to it. And yeah, thinking about it, looking at Vega 56, which is around about 7 or 8% faster, it appears in most cases Vega 56 is just about faster than the 1070. But if you recall back from my history of GeForce Part 2 video, where I told you that the GTX 1070 was cut down by 25%, so it's not exactly difficult for Nvidia to release a new GTX 1070 Ti, cut down something less than 25%, and something that would just about be fast enough to beat Vega 56, and possibly even drag prices down as well. Now, I don't know if this is what they're going to do, but Video Cards has got wind of this rumour of a GTX 1070 Ti, which could be in the works. I started thinking about this, and there's a couple of ways Nvidia can look at this. They do have room to make a faster 1070 Ti, and there is absolutely no doubt that that will be a massive selling graphics card. And it will be faster than Vega 56. They might even release one that's just about faster than Vega 64, which would be one that wasn't cut down very much at all, but that one may require GDDR5X. So I'm not sure about that. The second alternative is they don't even bother because they are still selling a massive amount of graphics cards. I mean, look at their revenue trend here. Ever since Pascal launched, they've basically jumped an extra 40-50% in revenue. Even in the second quarter this year, that is some pretty hefty looking sales. It was always going to drop after Q3 and Q4, but in all honesty, if this year's Q3 and Q4 numbers are back around those numbers, I would not at all be surprised. They just keep on selling graphics cards no matter what, and they maybe even just decide that there's no point. Why even bother bringing attention to Vega 56? They're in such a commanding position, and they continue to sell cards. So why give you more? And why risk bringing attention to the fact that AMD has an alternative, even if the 1070 Ti was faster? So that's one just to think about. I simply do not know again. My suspicion is that Nvidia, being the company they are, might decide to release this. I mean, I can see people losing their minds over this card. The press will line up to declare it as the new mid-range king. Everybody sitting on a GTX 970 who hasn't upgraded yet would certainly consider buying this at anything below $400. So yeah, I do think that this is a possibility here. And in fact, I would like to see them release it and give AMD something to really think hard about because as far as I'm concerned, they should have known this would likely happen and they don't really appear to have any response to it. So moving on to Intel and over at DreamHack Montreal, where an enterprising tech YouTuber known as Mr. Tech QC found one of HP's new Omen models sitting around. Now it turns out that this had a Coffee Lake i7-8700K CPU. So this enterprising gentleman decided to appropriate a monitor, hooked it up to the back of the Omen and ran Cinebench R15. And it's safe to say that results were nothing great. Very unspectacular result indeed, with a 6 core 12 thread 8700K only scoring 1230 points. Now this is an HP Omen and it's guaranteed to have bog standard memory and a couple of things that you find in these OEM machines that don't tend to make an awful lot of sense to enthusiasts. But yeah, 1230 points, that comes in just behind a Ryzen 1600X, which is also 6 cores and 12 threads. It is of course well ahead of the 4 core 8 thread 7700K, but pretty much in line with what you would expect with another couple of CPU cores in there at around about 3.7 gigahertz. Rather disappointing performance, it has to be said. It's going to be very good in single thread, or it looks like it will be. Judging by the single thread score, it appears to be on par with KB Lake. No great surprises there. And we have seen previous leaks where it's doing around about 5 gigahertz and some interesting scores. It could be a very good gaming CPU. And there will of course be another one, 8600K, a 6 core, 6 thread CPU. So those could be fairly interesting. I'm not expecting any great surprises here. It should overclock pretty well, but I expect power consumption to go through the roof. It's the same 14 nanometer process and we've already seen that Intel has got nowhere left to go in terms of thermals. The thing about Cinebench again, Ryzen has better SMT compared to Intel's hyperthreading, so that could be making the difference here. Even though the Intel CPU has a higher IPC, it will almost certainly not be able to maintain high clock speeds on the typical 95 watt motherboard. So for me, it's going to be much faster than Ryzen in single threaded. It won't be an 1800X in multi-thread. Maybe with a really, really hefty overclock, it will get close. And Intel will be keen to put that point across. The worst here that I think can happen is that AMD needs to drop prices on the 1800X and 1700X, which is going to be great for us. An 8 core 16 thread CPU around 4 gigahertz, it could end up a 
very good match up there. I expect AMD to be more power efficient, with Intel being higher clock speeds, higher IPC, and that little bit better when it comes to gaming. And finally, still with Intel and Ryzen, and a humorous article over at the register, where apparently AMD Ryzen beats Intel Core i7 as a heater that is also a server. And the story goes, a French cloud concern, Quarno, Carnot? Quarno? I guess that's probably Quarno if they are French wants to use AMD processors to heat water. But no, this isn't a cruel joke at the expense of thermally inefficient silicon. As we know, Ryzen is pretty efficient, very good thermals, but it's actually a deliberate plan to use the CPU's heat producing powers for good. So this Quarno bunch have created this QRAD, some kind of radiator, using three CPUs to provide heat and serve as a node in distributed cloud. And the company goes on to say that Ryzen Pro is producing the same heat as the equivalent Intel CPUs we were using while providing twice as many cores. So they're gaining 30 to 45% compared to the i7 they were previously using. So obviously, they're not talking about Skylake X, as the waste heat from three of those would be enough to heat a small village. I'll catch you later, guys.